everybody and welcome back to the Emerald Coast. All of the harvest is in and we have now cycled over to field preparations for next year. So we're out here on our sunflower fields. Uh, we are using the subsoiler. Trying to dig up this dirt, get it all broken up real good. Break up the uh, sunflower roots and leftover stalks stems, whatever you want to call them. Trying to get everything all worked up real good so we can put oats back into these fields. We're going to put oats into all of the fields that had our sunflowers. So that is going to be fields 1, 2, and 3, and field 16 way over there by the by the pig farm. So we are just getting started here with our subsoiling on field 3. Give this tractor and subsoiler a good shakedown. And we'll check all the parts and pieces, make sure everything's good and tight, and we'll head over to field two. He's across the street. And we were able to put put some slurry down on all of these fields without too much of a hassle. Uh, between our slurry and our digestate, we've got all of these fields covered with our first first application of fertilizer. We'll come back and put another application of probably granular fertilizer on these fields before we plant. And then we'll come through and uh, put oats in. Hopefully before the uh, before winter. Give these, give these fields a good, good chance at uh, being fairly far along in the growth cycle come next spring. Because I'm hoping, I'm hoping uh, to get these oats off the field next year in early summer, which will really help us out trying to uh, maximize our field usage by getting as many fields flipped uh, for soybeans. here because the plan is like I said we're gonna put four fields in oats fields one two three and sixteen and then we're gonna put four fields into barley fields 11 14 15 and 24 so you can see fields one two and three are down here by the horse farm 16 is way over there to the west by the pig area and then field 11 is the big field there just just below where we put all the soybeans in that GSI bin. Fields 14 and 15 which are those big fields just south of cow farm. And field 24 which is just north of the uh, lumber yard. We're going to put those in barley. And if everything works out, we'll be able to flip all eight of those fields into soybeans next year. That would be absolutely outstanding. Something else that we've really been battling with, uh, talked it over quite a bit. I think I think we're going to have to uh, we're going to have to sell off our beef cattle a little bit earlier than, than maybe we had wanted to. I think we're going to do that either right before winter or right at the start of winter. Just based on the fact that we've got uh, we're kind of low on hay this year due to only being able to get one cut off of the big field and that cut went straight to silage. A little low on hay and well we don't need to feed those mouths, then we don't need to feed them. So I think we're going to send those guys off to a uh, processing plant, so to speak, here in a couple days. The uh, speculation on price looks pretty good. It looks like we're going to be kind of toward the upper end of the uh, beef, beef price anyway. 
so might as well take advantage of that offer for that capability while we can. I think what we'll do is after this pass, I want to get out and just check the field, see if this uh, subsoiler is doing the job. It looks like it is from the window here. Check this out and see. Yeah, see, we're trying to break up all of these stalks and then the roots. Now, in these tall plants, they're going to have a pretty tough root system. This looks looks real good. Take a reading. Get up weeds. I have to uh paint saw is not gonna do us any good. We have to see what we can do about those weeds. Old tractor, she doesn't have the GPS. Gotta do it the old school way. Guess I could have used a cloth, but uh, well, little girl, she doesn't get out very often. Seem to bring her out just when we need to do the big field work. to get her out and uh, warmed up. Get her running good. Last thing we want to do is have her go and deteriorate in the barn, in the shed, whatever you want to call it. Now, field four there is uh, we're going to put that in sunflowers next year basically flopping these two fields if you will we're going to put sunflowers on 17, 18 and 19 also those were the fields that had our shelled corn in them last year that's because when we did a little bit of a soil analysis post harvest it seemed like uh Seemed like these sunflowers would do well in those fields. We are planning on um, ripping up similar to similar to the subsoil here, but we're going to use that John Deere uh, V Ripper, I think they call it. We're going to rip up those corn fields good here in the next day or so and put down some anhydrous we want to follow our corn with anhydrous that'll help fortify the ground for the sunflowers and pretty much any other crop that follows corn corn seems to uh, just pull all types of nutrients out of the soil Seems to be going along fairly well. Catch this grip here.
I'm just going to go ahead and, like I said, finish this field off. Then we're going to take this over to field two and uh, see about getting that started. If we can get that done this evening before it gets too terrible dark. And, uh, well, I'll bring you guys back tomorrow morning when we head over to field 17, 18, and 19 and start uh, ripping up that ground. Have yourself a good evening. I'll be right back with you in the morning. Well, good morning, everybody. We're over here at the horse farm because I wanted to get started early. Got the case hooked up to our fertilizer spreader, and I wanted to run down and get some fertilizer from the bulk cell point before we head over to the pig farm and start ripping up that cornfield. When I get, uh, get some of that cornfields ripped up today. So hopefully we can also get started on our anhydrous applications. So you can see we were able to get field two and three done. Daryl's going to get started over here on field one in a little bit. I think he was just in the trailer there getting some getting some breakfast. And we may be down here right before they open. I think everyone's still closed. Bollard's up. May just, uh, like the gate is still there, still closed. Let's just swing in here to the BGA. We will be out of traffic. Might as well weigh this while we're here. 30,000 liters. 30,000 pounds. Sorry. Oh! Got all about our silage. We'll swing through after we... Ah, oh, there they go. They're just opening up. We'll swing back after we get our load. So we can uh, check on our silage. It should be ready to uncover. We're not going to do any fertilized spreading today, but we do want to go ahead and get this. Oh, $8,600. For just under 11 tons of fertilizer. So we'll weigh ourselves on the way out. Go 1.3 million liters of silage. Ready to be processed into the BGA. You know, whenever we have time. Let's see if this scale picks up on our fertilizer. We are a bit heavier. 2,000 pounds now. I don't think that really comes out to 11 tons. 30,000 pounds before. 20,000 pounds heavier. So, yeah. 11 
11 tons would be what should be 22,000 pounds. Uh, I guess that's close. Close ish. That's what we do here on the channel. We are ish. A lot of ish. Realistic ish. Close ish. And we farm ish. We're definitely not Amish. <laughs> uh, that was a joke, guys. I don't hear you laughing. LOL in chat in uh, in the comments if you thought the um ish joke was remotely funny ish. You also don't ish. We'll have uh, much time to do any ishing around here. Going to put this here under the building. We're going to get Daryl started. After he gets started, knows what what's expected of him, and uh, we'll be right back. All right, so just breaking out of the roleplay-ish storyline that we usually do, I just updated OBS right before the previous segment. So if you pretend, basically, we we changed out OBS from yesterday to today, game day, and I just want to see. I haven't checked the recordings yet, so the volume may be a little lower. Uh, it looks possibly a little lower in the uh, in the mic. Kind of audio graph. If it is noticeably lower, we will uh, try to get that adjusted up for the next video. But yeah, my goal is going to be to try to get these um, cornfields flipped as far as plowed, anhydrous supplied, which should then give us our two stages of fertilizer. And then we can come through with our cedar and get the oats planted uh, before the end of late autumn. I think looking at the weather forecast, it was supposed to be good weather today and tomorrow. And the fact that we've got two full days to do that work, I don't see any reason why we shouldn't be able to get all of all three of these fields planted in oats. Or I guess seeded in oats. Okay. We already got our 9RT hooked up to our V Ripper. Then we've got our T8 over here hooked up to our anhydrous tank and our anhydrous applicator. So the goal of today is going to be to get these smaller fields ripped up. Then we're going to have Daryl come in and rip up the larger field over there. And then once he does that, we'll get started on our anhydrous application. Making sure we're going fairly straight. Auto with this thing. So our obligatory 15 metres. Lock her in. And then all we've got to worry about is picking it up here. 
good edge. We're going to go ahead and just plow all the way across. I find it's just easiest to work both of these fields together. And yes, I know. I could just plow them together. But one day I might. I just might want to uh, do something different with these two fields and not have them on the same rotation. And then where would I be? I'd have them plow together. And I'd have to deliberately unsplit them or unmerge them. This works just fine. What we're going to do is we're going to skip a row. Because this tractor... Oops. Do... Tractor turns much sharper than the V-Ripper. And I don't need the V-Ripper going crazy. As a result of me basically uh, turning it too sharp. I think I accidentally double tap that. Got to check that valve. Raised it up, but then it just fell right back down. All right, so since this is some of the most fun and intriguing work ever on the farm, we're going to jump into our obligatory time-lapse song montage. And I'll bring you guys back once we are done the plowing, at least on these two fields. And then we'll get good old other brother Daryl out. Get him here on the 9RT. We can take over with big blue Bessie and start plopping down some anhydrous on these fields.
right guys well i hope you all enjoyed that little montage of uh, of audio and visual enjoyment just about done our last pass here on these two fields they're not overly big they really really don't take that terrible long to uh, plow Get this last little bit done and uh, take her down there and get Daryl started on the lower field. I had our shell corn in it. And then I wanted to take a look at our tablet and basically run down where we are as far as our harvest goes for the end of this year. Remember, we've already sold all of the sunflowers. So the sunflowers are not going to be obviously in our in our harvest total. Just looking at what we have in Corey. Still think those two fields took about a half tank of gas. Fuel. Probably take the rest of that fuel. Alright, off he goes. So we'll let him go ahead and do that. Take a look and see where other brother Daryl's going. About halfway done field. Have to finish up the ends for him. So as far as crop goes, we've got 9,900 liters of barley, 1,100 liters or 1,100 bushels, bushels of barley, bushels of oats, almost 10,000 bushels of soybeans. 4,300 bushels of grained corn. Uh, the sugar beets we have here, I think they are over in the Raswood facility. Eighty-nine tons of wood chips. Three hundred sixty-five tons of silage, I guess, uh, in our fermenting silos. Eleven tons of straw. Not sure where? So I guess our straw is stored over at Raswood also. And nine tons of manure, I guess, sitting in the heap by the uh, by the the cows. Go ahead and run on over here and get started on this anhydrous application. Shouldn't have any problem getting our anhydrous done. Before the end of the day, assuming that uh, Daryl's able to work effectively on that field there. Find up. Hold it. And on and off we go. See if we've got good lines going. Oh yeah, that looks good. There's a working with goes. Your anhydrous gauge is going down. Good to see, and let's go ahead and just check the tablet. And we see fertilize is up to two. We are off by just a hair. It's gonna be a little annoying.
go into go into here and do snap to terrain angle. That should snap us to a hard 90. And we're going to do the same thing that I did with the plowing. I like to uh, skip rows. Go up, skip a row, come back. And then what we'll do is we will then fill in as we kind of make our passes up the field. So we're going to make passes down the field. We're going to make passes up the field. This particular implement does not work well with hired help because of the fact that it has a dolly on the back. So skipping a row also helps with the turning radius. If you're going to use the anhydrous mod, and you can find this over at nexusmods.com. Now, you're going to need to use a map that has been specifically prepared uh, for anhydrous uh, in order for you to have an anhydrous fill type. Uh, but I think you could also use this mod with regular liquid fertilizer. See down there in the lower right, we definitely have anhydrous as its own unique fill type here on Emerald Coast. And you could also, you could buy a pallet. So you could buy a tank of anhydrous too. Needed to from the store. I guess if you didn't have an anhydrous fill type, uh, cell point, I should say. So on this map there, or on, I guess, any map, effectively there is no difference between anhydrous as far as the effects of the game, between anhydrous and liquid fertilizer, other than the fact that anhydrous has its own unique fill type here on this map and on other maps by CCS 101. It basically has the same effect as liquid fertilizer. Just note that it is not liquid fertilizer. Find other anhydrous looking mods uh, that simply take liquid fertilizer as a fill type. I think this one will also take liquid fertilizer as a fill type. If you play more, or should I say if you play less realistic-ish, uh, then we are here. But on this map and other CCS 101 maps, there is a specific anhydrous fill point. It's modeled after what an anhydrous fill point would look like. And this tank indeed takes anhydrous as a fill type from that fill point. I have to clean that corner up a little bit. Carol seems to be making pretty good progress over there. By the time I get over there to that field, 
we should have plenty of field done that we can just continue our anhydrous application over there while he continues ripping that field up. And we should be in a pretty good shape tomorrow to uh, put some oats in the ground. I think Daryl was saying that he was uh, thinking about trying out a new cedar from a Canadian company tomorrow. That he had a, had a, a line on one, had one lined up to uh, to be brought over here sometime this afternoon and evening. Kind of on a trial basis. Give it a try. And if he likes it, he's going to retire that old John Deere cedar that we've got there in the shed in favor of this newer one. Apparently the newer one has um, a larger seed tank and fertilizing capability on it. I think it's got a bit larger working width also. So that'll be good as we have picked up more and more fields over our years of farming this land. Having a larger cedar will definitely, definitely help out. It was the day where we just had these three fields worry about for our big farm but now we've got what well, we've got as far as the eye can see basically we've got those two fields there we've got the field across the way we can see we've got these two fields over here now field there by the uh, the big GSI tank so soon then we might be able to say that uh, we own everything for as far as the eye can see. It's almost the case now. Not quite. Instead of making this sharp turn to catch that, what we're going to do is we're going to up here and we're going to pick this up. So, and then we're going to double back, pick up that little strip there to our left. Then we've got uh, what, just two more passes. there and we'll have both of these fields done so with that guys I think I'm going to let you all go hope you guys liked the video please go ahead and click that like button let me know in the comments what do you think of our field prep here or as how we are preparing our fields for eating after our corn harvest until next time, happy farming. Be sure to like, subscribe, and click that notification bell.